Okay, so here we are on uh, the 20th of November. And uh, so uh, this week, and um, I'm sorry, the 27th, we're the 27th of November. Uh, so this week and next week are the last two weeks of class. So in fact, uh, in fact, thir Tuesday of next week is the last day of class. And so um, uh, there's some things that I need to cover here. Um, I mentioned that uh, we're only going to have one more quiz. Uh, this is going to be quiz uh, E4, and that's going to be one week from today. Uh, at the end of the class, and uh, there will not be a quiz five, uh, and then this assignment four, which I'm going to be talking about today, is going to count 200 points out of the 100, uh, uh, 1,000 points. So uh, I haven't covered uh, artificial intelligence here. I haven't covered digital media. Uh, I haven't covered business systems okay, or globalization. Uh, I'll cover as much of that as I can uh, in uh, this today and Thursday. Okay. Yes. It is uh, due on uh, uh, December the eighth at, at midnight. So uh, what will happen is uh, next week uh, uh, on Tuesday, December the fourth. You'll take the last quiz, and then on Saturday, December the 8th, by midnight, you should turn in uh, your last assignment, and you're finished with this class. Okay? Uh, the Raiders and I will be working on this class the week after that, so uh, on um, December the 11th, uh, we'll be you know, working on getting the grades together, and hopefully uh, we'll have that all done by the end of uh, uh, the week of the December the 8th. 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Okay, so uh, so that's uh, that about the agenda. Uh, I guess the next thing is about uh, the grading. And um, So uh, the grading, uh, assignment one is all finished, okay. Uh, assignment two, uh, the written part is all finished, okay. Uh, the verbal part is now finished as far as class is concerned. There are a number of people who have not yet made a presentation uh, for one reason or another, and I don't know why. Those of you who have not made a presentation need to make Appointment with one of the graders, okay, uh, uh, and uh, at their, their office hours, you know, or make an appointment with the graders to give your talk, okay, outside of class. It's up to you to make the appointment with the grader, okay. If you don't do it, uh, you know, uh, then you'll get a zero out of 30 points, okay, uh, for your verbal, okay. Assignment three, uh, one of the two graders has done all of his uh, grading for assignment three. Uh, the other one is, is still doing it again. Okay. E1, E2, and E3 are all done. Okay. E4 will be next week. Okay. Uh, then, um, I will have to uh, uh, give you uh, up to 100 points for classroom participation. That's mainly done on how many times you've been absent. Okay. Or talked in class, okay. Or did something that displeased me, okay. I mean, uh, some people got their marks off but never knew it because we talked in class. Yeah. No, E3 is done. Uh, I may not have, uh, I have a mark on what you can get back from it. You want to know the correct grades and your answers, right? I probably need to change that uh, because, uh,
I don't give class participation to people who talk a lot in class. Uh, then uh, I do have some extra credit. <laughs> So I need to talk to Arusha about uh, the uh, extra credit. She's given me the list of the people who were in uh, during she did the first uh, experiment. And then uh, she gave me another list for the people who done the second experiment. I haven't decided on how much uh, credit that's going to be. Uh, I need to talk with her. Uh, and she has been busy. and I have been out of town. Uh, but I hope by next uh, Thursday uh, I can... Uh, I'll let you know how much extra credit will be involved there. Okay, so I guess that's it on the grades, okay? So now, let's look at the uh, assignment. And uh, let's look at assignment four. And so on assignment four, we have uh, the document here, which tells you what assignment four is, uh, and then we also have uh, a uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so you have to uh, download uh, this document and this uh, spreadsheet. So let's look at those. Okay, so here's assignment four. Uh, and so assignment four uh, is uh, design a database to hold uh, stock market information to import data from Excel into an access database and then to design queries to retrieve relevant information. So uh, if you have read uh, this uh, assignment, <coughs> Uh, you'll see that it consists of steps. So there are 10 steps in this assignment. So it's a fairly long assignment, and that's the reason it's to you set you in place of uh, one of the quizzes, okay, uh, as well as an assignment. And that's the reason that uh, it's worth uh, 200 points. So um, step one, save the Excel file attachment named uh, master uh, spreadsheet. It has five sheets on it, NYSE, NASDAQ, okay, board members, uh, board members to company relationship, and uh, ticker ID. So uh, you got to uh, save this Excel uh, file, okay? And so let's just briefly look at that Excel file. So uh, here is the Excel file uh, that's part of the assignment. And uh, this Excel uh, spreadsheet has five sheets on it. Yeah? And so you, you have to know how to get from one sheet to another. Yeah? Now, down here at the bottom, this uh, right here tells you which sheet you're on. Uh, the default name of uh, the various sheets are sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, sheet four, and so forth. Uh, and, but you can give them a name, okay? And you can go from one sheet to another with these little arrows here, okay? So here in the first sheet, uh, <coughs> the first sheet is uh, NYSE, uh, which stands for the New York Stock Exchange. And um, on this first sheet, uh, we have nine companies uh, that you selected. So 
Uh, these nine companies represent uh, companies that people have selected during the class. And um, so um, up here at the top, um, it says NYSE, and the uh, second uh, row has headers on it, so the date. And these are just the, the uh, values uh, of your stocks, okay, on a day-by-day -day basis from uh, September the 25th until November the 5th. So here, AMD on 9.25, the uh, adjusted closing price uh, was $3.28. The next day it was 3.32. So this is the data uh, that you used in assignment number three. And so it just has all these prices uh, of the stock between 9.25 and uh, 11.05, and uh, the name of the company, and the ticker uh, ID for the company. That's on the first sheet. The first sheet is named NYSC. The second sheet is uh, the NASDAQ. And uh, there were 20 companies on the NASDAQ uh, that were selected uh, from you. Okay? And so we have the same information for that. The third sheet is called board members. And um, it's just a name of nine people. Uh, and uh, it just simply has uh, a person ID for each of these nine people, uh, the last name and first name of these nine people. These are people that uh, sit uh, on the boards of uh, various companies. These names are just made up names now. They're not the real people. Uh, but as we're saying that uh, these nine people sit on the board of directors of these 29 companies, you know, uh, and uh, like John Smith will sit on the board of several of these companies. And then uh, the uh, next sheet uh, is uh, the board member to company relation. Okay? And it just has two columns on it, the person uh, and the ticker ID. This means that person number one uh, sits on the board of company number seven. Person number five sits on the board of company number 12. Person number nine sits on the board of company number three, and so forth. So person number one is here, sits on the board of company number seven, sits on the board of company number 24, sits on the board of company 19, sits on the board of company 23, and so forth. So uh, it tells which of these nine people sit on which boards okay, of these companies. And then um, the uh, very last sheet basically just gives the uh, sticker ID, the sticker ID of each of the companies. Okay? So AMD is company number one, GE is company number two, and so forth. And these uh, are the names of the companies in the order that you find them in, on the first sheet to the second sheet. Okay? So the first nine companies, AMD. Those companies are all on the New York Stock Exchange. And if you go back to the NYSE sheet, you'll see this is listed first, second, third, fourth, okay? And, uh, and then down here, these companies are the ones that are listed on the NASDAQ. Okay. So that's what's there. <laughs> Okay, step one. Save the Excel file, attachment named Master Spreadsheet. This has five sheets, okay? So saving that, that's easy to do, right? You just download that uh, Excel file. Then you do step number two. Step number two says using uh, the sheets NYSE and NASDAQ and, and ticker ID of the Excel attach, attachment, Create an Excel table named stock data. Step two is an Excel step. Uh, it does not involve uh, database, the database system uh, at all. 
Uh, you have one Excel file that's given to you, and it's asking you to create another Excel file, uh, you know, from that one you're given. Okay? And actually, I went through that uh, in quite a bit of detail uh, the Thursday, you know, before things. Thursday, one week before Thanksgiving, okay, uh, and showed you how to do that, okay. Uh, you can do it uh, easy enough, you know, simply by uh, you know, taking one item at a time, okay, uh, from uh, the sheet you're given, okay, and putting it in the sheet you're supposed to create. Uh, I went to a lot of trouble to show you how to do that faster by using the transposed operation, okay, and vector operations. You don't have to use the transpose operation in the Becker operation. You do it one at a time, okay? It is going to take more time. In fact, uh, the grader and I will not know what steps you did in creating this table uh, because uh, there's no audit trail there. And, uh, but anyway, uh, we will be able to look at the, we will be able to look at the table and see if the table is done correctly. Okay, now. Step three, create a new access database. So step three is the first time that you actually get into the database part of this assignment. Okay. Create a new access database named this, okay? And it's important for you to read these directions and it's important for you to follow them meticulously, okay? What we will take off for is not following directions. I tell the graders, you know, the, the student does not follow the directions. Okay? That's what you, uh, that's a thing you can take off for. Okay? So for instance, if you turn this in and don't, and don't use this name right here, okay, uh, then you'll be, some points will be taken off because you didn't follow directions. Uh, usually the reason people don't follow directions is they didn't read the assignment carefully. And uh, we want people to read assignments carefully. Uh, the other reason is uh, that uh, you forgot or something and don't take it seriously. Okay, step four, import your Excel stock data. This is what you did in step two. You chose to import it from Excel into uh, Access. Okay. And I did that uh, last time. Uh, and uh, so it's really easy to import. Uh, I might do it again this time if, if anybody wants. Okay. That's step four. So that's how to import from Excel into Access. It's an important uh, thing, though. And it's done very, very uh, often in business. And steps five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are all. Uh, involved with queries. So uh, basically, at the beginning of step five, you only have one table. So all of these queries, uh, five, six, seven, and eight, are queries that just involve the data from one table. You don't have to join any tables together for the query. Step five, create a query that returns all stocks whose total dollar value on 11.5 uh, is greater than or equal to $100,000. Save this query as stocks that gained value. Step six, okay, create a query that returns all stock whose total value is less than 100,000 stocks that lost value. You have to call the query stops at loss value. If you call it something else, again, uh, you didn't follow directions. Uh, seven is a query uh, stops uh, that are greater than 100,000 and have a share price less than 100. Seven eight, uh, the query stops is a value of $100,000 uh, or has a price less than 20. Stocks of interest too. Create a separate query that returns stocks whose total value is the greatest. Okay, save this query as the most valuable stock. Be 
these are easy queries to make. And uh, now step 10 is a little bit harder. So let's look uh, at step 10 a little carefully here. So, and this is uh, this is the uh, only uh, step that involves multiple tables and uh, joining of tables on queries. Some people are on the board of more than one company. Create a people table. And this will be the second table in this uh, with fields, person ID, last name, first name. Okay, you can just read that in. Okay, again, you can import it. Uh, from uh, the uh, uh, master uh, 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 sheet that you're given. We create a people table with the person ID, last name, first name. Also create a person, person ticker table with two fields, the person ID and the ticker ID. Again, you can read that table in again. Uh, create a query that requires as input a person ID, which outputs the person's first name and last names, along with the total dollar value of the companies for which he is on the board. Okay, now um, I'm now going to uh, bring up uh, a database uh, that. Uh, So uh, here is uh, uh, what I did uh, a week ago Thursday. Uh, this is all, you know, stuff that's directly applicable uh, to this assignment. Uh, I uh, read in the stock data uh, from Excel and created a stock data table in Access. Let's look at the stock table. So here is the stock table, okay? It has a stock ID, okay? Uh, in the order uh, specified, okay? Here's the ticker for that stock. Here's the full name of the company for that stock. Here's the price on 925. The number of shares uh, that were bought on 925 for $100,000. The price uh, on 11.5 of that stock, and the dollar value on 11.5 of that stock. And so uh, I went through last time creating each one of these columns, okay? Uh, and, uh, and then importing them into Access. So that's the table. Then uh, I uh, created uh, two queries, okay, stocks of interest one and uh, stocks that gain value, okay. So uh, let's, let's do uh, this query here. Let's look at this query, stocks that gain value. So here are the stocks that gain value. Uh, ARMH, okay. uh, you know, we, we invested $100,000, uh, you know, 925, 11.5, we had made, we made $21,000, okay. That's pretty good return on investment, right? That's 21% in about two months, okay, or a month and a half, okay. Uh, you know, if you want to extrapolate that to a full year, you know, you're really doing quite well. Uh, T2, okay. The games company was doing next to you know, on Facebook. Even you made money, we even made money on Facebook, okay. Uh, because we didn't invest on Facebook when it first came out, we invested in Facebook on 925, okay. And so from 925 to 115, you know, we even made $4,000, $4,700 on Facebook, yeah. Um, <laughs> So if we look at the um, uh, design view, 
Um, you can see there's just the one table. And uh, we only, uh, this table uh, is called the stock data table. And, and uh, these are the, uh, these are the uh, fields, okay, there. And so I'm only picking two fields. Uh, I'm picking the uh, company name and the dollar value. So let me just eliminate this right here. Now, if that's all I did uh, was uh, uh, pick these two fields, okay, uh, and then run this query, it basically will print out just those two columns of the table. There it is, the company name and uh, the, uh, the value. Uh, we're sorting this descending, okay? We did sort it to ascending. And there the values go up and up as they go down. Uh, then uh, this is the, cri the criteria here is, okay, that the value be uh, greater than or equal to 100,000. Okay. Now run it. It only gives us the companies that who had a value greater than $100,000. And it uh, starts them okay, in descending. Okay. So that was uh, stocks that gained value again. Okay. Uh, stocks of interest one. Uh, so uh, these are the stocks that gained value, and yet their price per share was less than twenty dollars, less than or equal to twenty dollars. That is cheap stocks that had gained value. And this was a list there. In design view, uh, we have here. Uh, Uh, the company, uh, the value, okay, uh, eleven five, and the price on eleven five. Yeah. You get the price, uh, the value has to be greater than or equal to one hundred thousand, and the stock price has to be less than a hundred. Let's make it, let's just change some of this. Let's make the uh, stock price be, say, greater than, say, greater than or equal to. Uh, Oops, <laughs> I went in. <laughs> so it was all the cheap stocks, okay, basically. Let's say less than uh, $50. The really cheap, really cheap ones were the ones that did it, okay? Let's say the ones that are uh, uh, So less than 50 are uh, greater than uh, say 75. There were some, uh, um, but we didn't. Uh, oops. So the stock data is greater than 100,000. Oh, I was going to say. Um, 
alien are equal to So there weren't any in the range uh, that were greater than seventy five. So all the stock all the uh, lower price stocks were you know, uh, uh, doing well here. Okay, so set 10, okay. Some people are on the board of more than one company. Create a people table with fields person ID, last name, first name, okay. Also create a person ticker table with two fields, okay. person ID, ticker ID. Create a query that requires as input person ID, which outputs the person's first and last names along with the total dollar value of the company for which he is on the board. Okay, well, the first thing says create create a people table with fields uh, person ID, uh, last name, and first name. Well, that's one of the tables uh, that's in the uh, Excel file. So let's just do that again. Okay. I do today. Uh, close my uh, file. Okay, so here's my database again. Let me create a new table. Okay, so I go up here and I hit the create tab, and here's where I can create a table. Uh, actually, this is uh, external data. That's really what I, that's the tab I want. I want to bring in some data from Excel. So I double click on Excel. And it says, okay, uh, so specify the source data. So uh, give me your file name and browse, okay? Actually, uh, this is in uh, this map. It's in uh, this directory. In this directory. Mm -hmm. And so there's the master spreadsheet. Okay. You import the data into a new table in the current database. Okay. Or if you end up copy or link it. So we want to. Import the, the uh, source data. So I'm going to say OK. Data uh, Excel. Okay, I've got 
No, I don't know why Microsoft Access is uh, stopping and restarting this thing. Well, uh, the thing to do here you don't have any problem with your software. The thing to do is uh, basically restart your machine.
it worked that time. I, I guess uh, somehow um, one of those files had been corrupted, so I just had to do it again. Okay, so uh, I said uh, import from uh, this uh, Excel file, you know, that we downloaded. Okay. But it sees that there are these five different uh, sheets, okay? He wants to know if I want to import uh, from NYC, NASDAQ, board member, okay, so forth. Uh, I want to import uh, from the board members, okay? Yeah. Here's a little bit of a problem, okay? Uh, this uh, particular, this, uh, uh, and then this is a standard problem, okay? that uh, what uh, Microsoft Access expects is on the first uh, row it expects you to have any uh, names of the columns, okay? Uh, this particular Excel spreadsheet has uh, in the first row board members, okay? Which is the name of the whole thing. Okay? And uh, actually um, uh, Microsoft Access doesn't like that, okay? I'm going to click that out. Forget it again. What I did was uh, I just created uh, uh, I created a second sheet. Okay. This was a master sheet. Uh, so what I did was I just took out that first row uh, that said uh, board members. Okay. So now the first row has the um, titles of the row. All the other rows have the values of the row. Okay. So I'll go to the next. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you know what the first row contains column headings. Uh, and then it has this PID here, okay? And uh, it wants to know, you know, about uh, this, um, whether or not um, I want to assign these indexes or whether access should do that. It says, uh, I'm going to choose my own primary key. And this table is going to be board members. Finish. Okay. You want to save these imports? So uh, now I have in the second table I've imported that table from Excel. Okay. In order to import that table from Excel, I had to do uh, a little manipulation. I had to go into Excel. Uh, and I had to uh, put the table in a more, uh, I guess, good format. Uh, Access expects the first row to be the titles and all the other rows to be uh, the, uh, the data. Uh, if you put other stuff in, and it's often that people do put other stuff in, before you put the uh, names of each row, you'll put in the dates and other stuff of okay. And so you really have to take that out before you uh, import it into uh, Excel. Okay, so I got that.
So create a people table with fields, person ID, last name, first name. I just did that. Also create a person ticket table with two fields, a person ID and ticker ID. I want the uh, M to C relationship. Yeah. Person ID, table ID. Next, uh, first row has column headings. Yes. Uh, the field name. You can specify information about each of your select the field. Modify it to PG. There's no primary key here. This is the M to C relationship. So I now have uh, this thing the person ID and the ticker ID. Okay, uh, so I got that. Okay. Create a query that requires as input a person ID and which outputs the person's first and last names along with the total dollar value of the companies for which he is on the board. Create a query that requires as input a person ID and which outputs the person's first and last names along with the total value, dollar value of the company for which is on the board. Okay. So I'm going to create a Which query is that? Now I've got uh, three different tables. Okay. I've got the board member table. i got to have it, okay. I have the uh, person to company uh, relationship. I have it. And the stock data. So the person ID uh, of the board member table is going to be the same as the person ID uh, in the uh, member to company relationship. And the ticker ID here. Uh, on that, and uh, it's going to match with the ticker over here. So I basically join all these three tables together like one big table. Yeah. So I'm going to start over here. This has all of the tables and all of the uh, uh, fields in the table. So I'm going to start over here with the board member ID, okay. and then here. I'm going to put the board member's first name. And here, I'm going to put the board member's uh, uh, last name. Okay. So far, so good. Eh? So I'm going to type out in this query the um, board member's number and uh, first name and last name. That's all I've done so far. So my query's not done, but I'm going to run it. Okay, just to see how it is so far. Height mismatch and expression. 
board members. Uh, the ticker ID here should go with the uh, stock ticker ID, not the uh, not the ticker name. I see. Okay. All right. Um, I think so the board members ID. Board members first name. So, uh, uh, the ID first name and last name, right? and uh, also create a person ticker table with two fields. Create a query that requires us to input the person ID and outputs the person's first name and last name, along with the total dollar value of the company's both of which he is on. The board. So over here, uh, from the stock, <laughs> from the stock data, I'm going to put uh, the dollar value. I can sort uh, on this PID. I can sort, uh, say, I see the input, uh, uh, all the ones together, all the two together. Okay, so, so this guy, John Smith, uh, he appears, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Uh, and these, uh, so he's on the board of six different companies, and, uh, uh, these are the dollar values of the companies he, he, he's on. Okay, so now uh, I want to, uh, I really want to know the sum uh, of all these. I want to sum up uh, all of these values uh, for John Smith, and then I want to sum up uh, for Jane Johnson and so forth. Okay. Um, so I'm um, click on sum here. And then it says group by, group by, group by, group by. And I'm clicking here. I want to sum this field. Uh, I want to group by uh, 
the door group by the last name. The last name should be the same. The first name should be the same. And the So there, uh, let's see, it sums up um, all of John Smith's, all of Jane Johnson's. Okay. So John Smith uh, is on the board of a number of companies, and the total value of all the companies uh, he's on is $576,000. Okay. So that's what I want for number 10. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, in the last, uh, I guess, three lectures, uh, I've actually worked uh, this whole problem. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, uh, I don't know how much it you to understand, but, uh, last, but uh, uh, you're going to have to think about it. Uh, what uh, you should do is, um, this is uh, what is this, what am I supposed to call this last query anyway? The query that requires this number and number. This doesn't say um, it doesn't say what to call this query, so uh, good. We can just call this uh, I guess uh, step ten. Step ten query. I've got some object open here. So I'm ready to turn my uh, assignment in. <laughs> and this is what you should uh, uh, turn in, okay? So um, it should be a stock data table. It should look like this. Uh, there should be a board member table. Uh, there should be a relationship between the person ID and the table ID of the sticker ID. And, uh, well, I guess I don't have all of the uh, queries here, okay? I have three of the queries, okay? But in particular, I got the step 10 query. Turn this in uh, using uh, the uh, uh, Blackboard okay, facility for turning in, right? Okay, any questions? This is uh, all I'm going to talk about, uh, assignment number four. I had intended uh, in this class uh, to get going on uh, artificial intelligence. But uh, basically, in my time, um, 
Uh, I think artificial intelligence is one of the most interesting parts uh, of computer science. Uh, the advances here, you know, and then um, the sort of thing that you get you know, written up in the paper about. I'm sure you've all heard about uh, the uh, computer, um, uh, the blue, okay, playing the world's uh, uh, number one uh, chess player, okay, uh, Yuri Kasparov, and winning. And so here's the case of where the computer beat uh, uh, the person again. Uh, you also probably heard about uh, Jeopardy, uh, where the computer answered, uh, you know, questions posed in English, okay, uh, and did a better job of answering them than uh, the uh, best uh, people who ever played Jeopardy before. Uh, you've probably seen uh, these robots now that do some very unusual things. Okay. I want to discuss uh, a person named uh, Alan Turing. He's Alan Turing, okay. Uh, he's a very interesting person, uh, and uh, he uh, was the person who came up with uh, uh, the idea of artificial intelligence. Uh, Alan Turing was uh, famous for a number of things. He, he actually was back in World War II and became famous for deciphering the uh, Nazi uh, Enigma code uh, so that the British Navy was able to uh, listen in to the German uh, communications you know, with their submarines. And, uh, so he's kind of the beginning uh, of artificial intelligence. Uh, there's a there's a computer organization called the Association for Computing Machinery, uh, and its highest award that it gives uh, every year is uh, the Turing Award, uh, based on Alan Turing. So next time, um, I'm going to talk about artificial uh, intelligence methodologies, uh, about conventional AI, expert systems. Here's Casper off again, uh, playing. I'm talking about neural networks. Look at some AI applications. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any last questions? Oh, thank you. What is this? I'll give this to the instructor of this class. Yes. What? Yeah.